what's going on everyone and welcome back today we were either going to work on scroll views and scroll bars or we were going to work on the game object class and I decided to go ahead and go with the game object class just because right now we don't really have any information to require scroll views and scroll bars and I kind of want to get to rendering the scene as fast as possible just because I want to kind of take a break in December to hang out with my family and stuff so I may take the month of December off but before then I want to get to the point where we can uh, build scenes and possibly even uh, compile a small game or something and run it in a runnable jar so I want to get the important stuff the stuff that we really need right now over with so we'll probably just wait on the scroll view and scroll bars if we have time before then maybe I'll throw it in there but at this moment it's really not that important so we'll just go ahead and get some of the editor stuff done so we'll start with the hierarchy and there's really two kinds of hierarchies there's the game object hierarchy which has all the objects in the scene uh, who's parented to who blah blah, blah. then you have the component hierarchy which is going to be over here which is all the components and variables and blah 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 of each game object that you have selected but first uh, like right before I hit record I was kind of playing around with it to see where I need to be because it is Sunday I'm kind of last minute recording this and it's 117 I normally record way before that so I'm just kind of gonna have to last minute throw all this together but uh right before I hit record I was kind of kind of playing around with it making sure everything uh, worked as it should and this is what it looked like before well I did notice that buttons work just fine but uh, say right here but if we throw a button in an area so I'll say gooey dot button say hello and put new rect zero put this at 200 down and I'll say I don't know. Do no one hundred, then twenty. For the normal stuff, say button. I don't know. I'll just do button hover, whatever. Button hover. If I do this. it will render just like how it's supposed to except for if I try to click on it nothing happens well because we don't have buttons oh I guess to properly show this I would have to put it in an if statement so if I do this then debug dot log flipped it's because whenever we programmed buttons we didn't have uh, like areas and multiple areas done yet 
So if we click, nothing happens. If we click over here, where the button would be if it wasn't in an area, it says clicked. It's because we did it so late that we didn't compensate areas yet. So really quick, let's do that really fast. Which we can do right here. And come to think about it, I would have to create an... So one thing we didn't add, no we didn't add it, is uh, a addition function for the rec class. So we could just go ahead and do that real quick. We'll say public rec um, add uh, position which we will take in a rectangle so if we pass in a rectangle we will just add the positions together And we will return a new rectangle and just say uh, r dot x plus x r dot y plus y and width height. We can also do the same for uh, size like add size or add scale whatever but we don't need it yet so all right and right here I will say uh, rect RF for the rect final equals uh, let's see how do I want to do this R R dot add position and then pass in the area I believe should should do the trick But of course I need to say rf.contains, not r. And sorry, since it is last minute, I've got all my kids in fighting the living room. <laughs> so if you hear a bunch of noises, that's what it is. I've got four kids, so they're constantly bickering with each other. All right, so if rf.contains, rf.box all right that should do the trick and give me just one moment okay that was fun all right so if we go back here and i don't know why i deleted that there now Hopefully it should should work. Yeah, there we go. So now it now it works just as just as it should. Right here and click. All right, awesome. That did the trick. So that fixed all that. So next we need to um, probably do the game object class itself. Do game object already exists. Oh, I was doing a temporary class over here a minute ago. 
so I'll delete that. I'll just start a new one. Yes. All right. So now, game object. Yeah, I was testing out the the uh, button thing and then the game object class. But now we need to do the game object. And after the game object, we actually need to create the editor as well and go ahead and set all that up because they're going to be in two different classes. So for a game object, there's multiple things that we need to do. There's uh, components, which we are not going to get into just yet. But we also need to have things set up that we're going to use for uh, the editor as well as the scene. But some of the things that we use for the scene, we're going to be able to use for the game itself as well. Okay, hold on just a second again. Alright, I guess I'm going to have to speed this up even more. <laughs> These kids are getting antsy. Alright, so one of the things that we're going to need for game objects is the ability to enable it and disable it. Which we will also be able to do from the editor itself, as well as in programming during runtime. So we'll do enabled, which we're going to originally set it as true. We also need a tagline. This will be preferably good so that if we collide with something, we'll know exactly that the tag or where it belongs and we'll just originally set it to untagged all right so tag equals untagged the next thing we're going to need is the name so we'll do public string name equals new game object so it originally sets it as new game object. And then in our constructor, we'll also uh, set the name from there. So now we need to do some of the private stuff. This stuff will be able to be accessed during runtime without using a getter or setter because you can just change it and do whatever you need to it. So what we're going to need is a parent. So private game object parent. And I probably didn't tell you this before, but I'm not going to use transforms. I normally use a transform class that holds all of my transformation stuff, as you can see right here. But we're not going to do that in this one. We're going to combine a lot of the stuff that's in the transform class. We're going to throw it into the game object class. That way we're not having extra crap going on. So we can say, because we'll eventually have in here, we'll have the position and scale and what, what the hell ever. We're going to have all that in this class. We're not going to have, so you don't have to say like a game object dot transform dot position dot X just to move something left or right. So this was, this would originally be a transform, but since we're not using it, we can just use game object as a parent. So that if something's parented, it will always uh, start out using its parent's location. So if its parent's location on the X is 10, it's going to start out at 10. So if you say the, this position 
is one, it would actually be 11 in world space. So it'd be one on local space. I don't know, it may be a little confusing right now, but you'll see whenever it's all done. So with all that being said, since we have a parent, we also need a list of children. Say list of game object children equals new array list of game objects. And of course, do the importing. All right, now, now we're gonna use some of the stuff that is gonna be used in the background. Normal people don't really know about this stuff, but it is in here, and some, in, some engines don't even use them. Like what we're about to put is inline. And inline is an integer that starts out at zero. Inline is the amount of objects that it is parented to. So you have like your parent, grandparent, great grandparent, and so on and so on and so on. So you can think of it as like your ancestry. So if you have 10 ancestors, this would be a 10. And that helps in multiple ways. Uh, maybe doing loops through all of your parent or all of the parents instead of using like a recursive function. Uh, it also works in the hierarchy so that you know like uh, how far left and right the uh, text will be. All kinds of goofy stuff. But it, it helps a lot. We're also going to be using in no, not an integer, a string called ID. Now, ID is a special identification number. All game objects, whether they're seen game objects or game objects that you can throw in, um, I don't know, sometimes people refer them to as like prefabs or something. Something that you create in the project window that you can just drag over. That has all the information already set and all that good stuff. It's going to have a separate number than the exact same object that would already be in the scene. And that way we can actually separate the two. And if you if you take a game object that is a prefab down here and you throw it in the scene, it'll have the same identification number. That way you can share its information. So if you change information on the prefab, it's going to change the information on the, the exact same object that is in the scene. And that'll only be for prefabs. You can have multiple objects that are the exact same thing. So you have three trees or something in the scene, but only one of them is prefab down here. Then it's only going to change information for that. So just so you know, you still have your individuality. All right. Now, as for strictly the editor, we want something, we want to be able to expand the list and show children, but we also want to hide them too. So what we're going to do is we're going to use a private boolean expanded. So if it's expanded, then it's going to show all of its children. If it's not, then we're going to hide it. And we also need a hierarchical parent. Because you want a hierarchy, a hierarchical parent to start out with, and then everything in the scene is after that. That way it always uh, parents to something. 
So we'll go ahead and create the master parent. So we'll say private static because we want it to be accessed um, from all the game objects in the scene. The game object, and we will call it master. And we'll say new game object. And we will probably uh, I'll deal with that here in a minute. Oh, uh, I'll probably put a boolean or something in there so I know whether or not it should be a scene game object or uh, a non scene game object. Because non-scene game objects is, are not going to be rendered every frame, or it's not going to have be updated every every frame. It's only going to be updated if you tell it to update. All right, so now we need a list of instances, which will allow us to update all the instances in the scene uh, just by running a loop. So we'll do private static list of game objects. We'll say instances equals new array list of game object. And I think that is it. All right, now with the constructors. I'll say public game object. And then like I said before, add a Boolean and add to hierarchy. That way if we want it in the hierarchy, we can do that. And the master will not be added to the hierarchy. Uh, what am I doing? False. All right, so, so it's gonna create the game object and we're going to immediately set its identification number, which we will be using the UUID methods. So we'll do ID equals UUID, something built in, random UUID dot to string so that will throw it into a string state or into a string variable so now we need to check to see if it needs to go or if it does not need to go into the hierarchy and if it does not then we need to set the inline to negative one because it does not need to be zero or higher because, well, it, it doesn't need to be called. So, you do if not add to, if I can spell it right, add to hierarchy. Then I need to say, um, in, in line. Did I, I didn't spell it like that, did I? Inline equals negative one. Because anything zero or higher is gonna be in the scene. And I need to set expanded to true. set that false okay because our master parent won't you won't be able to see it in here like you can't see this master parent so it needs to automatically be expanded because we're not going to be able to change the expansion method or boolean 
so it needs to automatically be that way. And then we're just going to return out of the rest of this function and skip the rest of the code. So if it does need to be in the scene, then we need to add it to the instances variable. So we need to say instances, uh, instances dot add this. And that will add that to uh, to the instances variable. And next we need to parent it. But to parent it, we're actually going to call a parent method because we want other things to happen when we're parenting. Like uh, if I parent something, I also need to change my current parent's children and I need to also change the children of my new parent. So I need to call parent this now wait parent no I'm gonna be doing I'm doing that backwards I'm parenting to I'm parenting to the master so I'm parenting this to the master game object because I'm not setting a parent right here all right and another method or another constructor because we also need to pass in a name so we'll say string name we may also we may also do this as well and here later but We'll see because I also it in a later date whenever we do uh, the uh, Project window We also need to be able to set the name for the prefabs in the scene, but We're not gonna mess with that because we haven't gotten that far so Once we have the name we will do basically just the exact same thing up here, except for we don't need to check the add to hierarchy stuff. So I can actually just copy this, paste it there. And then I can just say uh, this dot name equals name, and then this stuff right here and just paste that over and that's it for the other constructor now we will probably just go ahead with the parent function just so that we don't have to look at all this red so public void parent and then game object g so the game object that we want to parent this to we will say if the parent does not equal null so if g equals equals null then we need to say g equals master that way, if we want to unparent something from everything, you know, except for the master game object, then we can just say uh, parent null. So if it's set to null, it'll just automatically set it to master. That way we don't have to find the master or even have access to the master. And then we're going to say um, if parent, right? Yeah, yeah, that's what I named it. I don't know why I was thinking I named it something else. So if the parent does not equal null, then I need to see if 
the parent does not equal the parent that we're trying to parent it to. So if we're not trying to parent to something, then we're already parented to. So if parent does not equal G, and I need to say parent dot, we haven't created that function yet either, so we need to remove child this. Okay, so if it, if it is a new object that we're parenting to, then we need to remove this game object from the children's list of our current um, of our current parent. And if it is currently parented to the same thing, then there's no point in doing anything else. We could just return out of it. And then we need to say parent equals G. Then we need to call parent dot children dot add this. And then set the inline. We will which we will do in just a minute as well. Parent dot inline minus one. And you'll see why, why I'm doing this in a minute. Okay, so I need remove child and set inline. Go ahead and do inline. We also need a method to get the current inline. So I'll just go ahead and do that as well. So public inline or public integer inline. And then return inline. No, not that. There. So that will get the current inline. Public void set in line and it needs to be of an integer value I guess and we're gonna say in line equals V but we also need to loop through the children and set their in line as well that's the whole reason why we need a function to set the inline because if we parent an object that already has children like say this game object already has a bunch of children and its current inline of the children say starts at eight or whatever but you're parenting to some or you're like unparenting it so it's going to the master object so it'd be like uh, at one and down so it needs to change all of its children's inline if not it's just gonna maintain uh, maintain its inline and everything's gonna be all jacked up looking so we'll say for Now I could put it right over here. Yeah, it'll look better right there. Do private and I. Almost forgot to cache an iterator. All right, for I equals zero, I is lower than children dot size, and I plus plus just your normal basic loop like we always do we need to say children if I spell it correctly children dot get I dot set in line and it would be 
v plus 1. Because, well, the child is 1 plus our current value. And that is it for the set inline function. Now we need a remove child. I don't think I need an add child right now. Yeah, so we'll just do remove child. So public void remove child. And of course we need game object G. We can also do it by uh, the index value. And you know what? Af after we do this one, we'll just do another remove child. We'll put an index as well. And matter of fact, I'll just call that function from here just so we don't have to call that uh, just so that we don't have to write it twice. Sorry. For i equals zero, i is lower than Wait, no, I cannot do that because if I'm set in line. Oh no, because I'm not doing all that at once. Okay, I can do that. For i equals zero, or i is lower than children dot size i plus plus plus. I'll say if children dot get i equals equals g, then there's two things that I need to do. I want to uh, call remove child i which we just talked about just so that we don't have to write the code twice and then we need to return out of it because if we do not return out of it it's just going to continue with the loop even though it already found it and did its thing so always remember to break or return out of a loop just so that you're not using up data where you don't need to be using then we need public void remove child integer i now I don't normally have to do this but since this is going to be public I might as well do it um, say if I is uh, greater or equal to children dot size then I need to return out of the function that way if you're trying to remove a child that is way too big or an index that is way too big bigger than the list size and it's just going to return out of it and doesn't do anything it won't throw an error i'm going to do game object uh, g equals children dot get i wait now i want to i'm going to change this uh, return index v that way we're not using uh, our i just in case for some odd stupid reason it it tries to get the other variable and then we're gonna say uh, didn't no I do need to do that uh, g dot parent null and then children dot remove v and then g dot inline equals zero
Yes, that should be correct. So set the parent to null. Actually, screw that. Instead of all that, I'm just going to say parent. No, not parent. What am I doing? Uh, G.parent master. Is that what I named it? Yeah. Yeah, so I'll just immediately set it to master instead of calling it uh, null and having the function taking care of it. All right, so what else do I need on here? I believe that's, uh, no, no, it's not. I need to be able to get this, that variable. I need to be able to get the parent too, right? Yeah, I don't have a, I don't have a method for that either. So public public uh, God game object parent and that will return my current parent. You also need children set in line remove child. Put it right here, why not? Um, public void, no, public list of game object. Uh, say children. Return children. So we just need some getters and setters for some of this stuff. Am I getting the ID anywhere? No. So we also need to get the identification number. So public integer ID return ID. What in the world? Didn't I name it ID? Oh, it's a string, not an integer. Duh. I forgot I was going to do an integer, but changed it to a string. There. I believe that is it for the game object function for this current moment in time. So, I'm going to go over here to the editor package, create a new class, we're going to call this editor. We also need a new class right there called uh, Hierarchy. Now, all of our uh, methods that are currently in the core class, we're going to put that inside of these, inside of these classes. We also need to the debug. We actually need to go down here I need to say uh, public void draw and what this function public static void what this function is going to do is it's just going to draw what we currently have in our debug which is this right here 
So we're going to actually remove all this stuff in here because we don't need most of this stuff, especially these over here, because it's all going to be drawn with the editor. So we'll put that in there. This will also clean everything up a little bit. So put that in there. And now we just need to uh, core we need a initialization for the editor. So do uh, public static void init. And what the initialization function is going to do is it's just going to create and store a new hierarchy. So, we do hierarchy h. Say h equals new hierarchy. Yeah, I need to set this to private static. Now we need a render method to render the editor. So we'll do public static void render. And what this is going to do is just the exact same thing that it does over here. So we need... Um, we'll copy this because we will we will need this later. You know what? We'll just no, just take the whole thing and go into the editor. We'll just paste it right there. And we also need to call debug dot draw. So that'll draw that. We also need to reset some of this. Like minus thirty. That'll work for right now. But it's gonna call called hierarchy, and inside of the hierarchy, we will have a function to uh, actually call all that stuff. So I think that's it for this editor thing right here and underneath GUI.init so after we initialize the GUI we will initialize the editor say editor.init we'll put some booleans here later too so that we can uncheck them and check them depending on if we're in edit mode I'm not going to do that right now though don't really need to and then call editor dot render. Let's say editor dot render. All right, so that will call all that fun stuff. Don't need this at all. So we can get rid of all that. Of course, an error is going to pop up on editor because we got rid of that. Okay. 
So now we can just strictly work on the hierarchy from here. So I did get an arrow down and our an arrow right uh, GY style. I already have that already prepared and I uh, wrote it up right before I started this video. So I'm going to do private GY style. Now if you don't have an arrow down or arrow right style set up right now. You can use any style that you currently have set up. You can use a button right now if you want and button down just to just to see it work for right now if if that's what you want to do and just create a style later. So it's whatever. So we need a GY style arrow down. So that's going to be open so that if we open it or expand an object to see its child, it's going to be facing down. If it's not expanded, then it's going to be facing right. Yeah, I think that's right. Private GUI style arrow right. Need to import GUI styles. We also need a string selected, which this string right here will be the the ID that we've currently selected. And we're just going to draw a box in the background, kind of like this. We've selected this line, so there's a blue box in the background. Yeah, and that's how that's going to work. We also need a click rect, which I will get to that in just a minute. What exactly a click rect is. First thing we need to do is do the um, constructor doesn't take any arguments um, you know what Let's change this to public. That way we can get and set any skin. Okay, so at the very beginning then I can actually set these because I did have it to private, which then we would have to call a method to extract it. So I would have had to create an extra method for that. And I don't want to screw with all that. So. so right here, we will actually just call GY dot, um, no, call arrow down right no I'm gonna set the skin private GY skin skin import GY skin there we go so now I can say skin equals GY dot skin that way, if we change it later, uh, we can always set it back. So anytime the hierarchy or whatever, or the editor is 
about to render, then we already know what the what the skin is or needs to be. So let's set let's set it right here. Say public static GUI scan skin. We'll just set it here instead. We'll also set arrow down and arrow right over there as well. Sorry about that. I'm just trying to make things neater and when I was typing this up just now I was thinking of only the hierarchy but that's not the only window that's going to be uh, going on so we need all this stuff together but we also need it accessible from our other editors so public static arrow down public static GUI style that we say skin equals GUI dot skin that sets that Did I have anything else in here no so inside of the editor now right here before I create the new hierarchy I need to say arrow down equals skin dot get I called it arrow down and then arrow right equals skin dot get I called it arrow right there, so that sets these values. Now we can go back into the hierarchy. And um, actually, we probably don't need to put anything in here now, now that we got rid of all that stuff. We will we'll add some objects and stuff in here when we're done to test it all out so okay public hierarchy now we need a render method public void render and window and you know what I don't think I'm gonna be using this integer window let's change that Where did I write that at I think we're actually gonna change that to a rectangle Do, 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 do. Consumer rectangle. Yeah, I'm going to pass in a rect. Instead. Begin area center F dot accept. editor core test we did this we'll call hierarchy dot render or hierarchy colon colon render hierarchy render GUI window that's gonna be a rect R Oh, 
this is going to be an H. This type hierarchy does not define renter integer. Hmm. What did I not change? I know I'm not changing. Oh, F dot except zero. Let's right here. Call rect center equals R. We'll say center equals box. We're going to pass in center. There we go. I think, what the hell did I do now? Window, oh, right there. Right. There we go. Now I got it. Maybe. I'll screw with you here in a minute. Oh, yeah, there we go. All right. So now we get the rectangle instead of the Windows identification number. Because honestly, it, right now, I, right now my head's a little scattered, but I don't think I'm going to be using it. But we do need the rectangle for inside of the render method. So, right here I need a list of game objects, and this will be my update list. Equals new array list of game object. No. I'll move over there. Why are you not showing up? Okay, I'm screwing something up. Well, for one, it needs to be that, 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 that. There we go. I'll leave that in there for now because I don't know if we're going to be using it. All right, so after we have an update list now we need to know the offset of the y position that we're going to be rendering the text so we'll say offset y equals zero now we need to add the parent or the master parent to the update list Uh, I think I made it static. Game object dot. I did not make it static apparently. Why can't I? Oh, I don't have a. Oh god, I'm forgetting all kinds of stuff. Public static game object uh, master and 
return master. So that will get the master. So cam object dot and master. There we go. There. So now we're adding the master to the update list. So now we're going to do a while statement. So we'll do uh, while update list dot size is greater than zero. So if we have an object in the list that still needs to be updated, it's just going to continue this loop. And we're just going to add what we need to the loop. So, say game object G per usual equals update list dot get zero. So we'll get the first uh, game object in the list. We'll say list game object children equals g dot children. So now we have a list of all the children of this object. Say if children dot size is greater than zero. Then, and say if, I'll just run all this together, g dot expand, I made a, what, what did I call it? Did I really miss that too? Yeah, I did. Cheese. Public Boolean expanded. And then it's going to return expanded. This, people, is why normally <laughs> you would, uh, you would do the getters and setters first and I did not do that and I waited for last like an idiot. There. So now I can say if g dot expanded, there we go. So if it's expanded, I need to say for, I didn't put a thing, so private int i. So for i equals zero, i is lower than children dot size, i plus plus. So I'm going to loop through all of the children and then we're going to uh, put those into the update list. Say update list dot add. I don't want all this. Update list dot add children dot get i. So then that adds those. So if I'm supposed to view all of the children, then it's just going to throw it into that update list to be rendered. Next, we need to probably should have done that before. I don't know. We'll see. Should should be fine. If g equals equals um, game object dot master 
then I need to say update list dot remove update why do I keep putting it there update list dot size minus one so we need to uh, remove the master from the list and then we'll continue I need to set the end line and this will be the end line of the uh, Y so I'll probably make it 16 because I think that's the same size as what I set uh, the text size for so that'll probably work just fine so go inline times 16 so if it's the first one in the element it's going to go 16 pixels down so now that we have the inline I need to set the click rect did I put that in here? Yes. Okay, so I said I would get back to this. What a click rect is, is uh, the rectangle that I can click for the text to be able to uh, highlight it. So like right here, I click there, click there, click there, blah, blah, blah. Anything inside of that box is a click rect. So we'll say click rect equals, and I'll set it to zero probably. So I don't think it needs to be over any. Probably have to offset the Y at some point. So offset Y. Um, I think I could probably set it to, oh, I'm not even on height. I was thinking of height. Uh, Geo, no, I don't. I need to get to, oh no, the area is the rect. Got it. Gotcha. R dot width and set this to, 20 probably I'll give it like a like a padding area between each one so now we have the click rect so if selected does not equal null so if we have something selected then we need to uh, run it against the ID of the current object. So if g.id.equals dot dot equals selected, I'm going to say gy dot box. We'll draw this first so that it's under everything. And we need click rec and set it to 20 as well. Uh, wait, I did something wrong. GY... Oh, I'm dumb. I'll set it to a box for now. I don't know what. I was trying to put this crap in. Okay. Oh. Alright. Selected. Now we need to loop through. Now we need to check if the children's size is greater than zero. So children 
dot size is greater than zero, then we're going to have to uh, draw an expansion arrow or whatever if it's open or not. Because we're just going to offset it if it doesn't have any children at all. So I'll say g dot expanded. Oh, we don't have a way to set it either. Expanded public void expand uh, boolean b expanded equals b and there we didn't have a setter for it so g dot expand uh, we'll set up a toggle and the GY will say G dot expanded. And pass in the in line. Then offset Y plus two. That way, because we have four, uh, four pixels of padding, because we have it 16 high, but then our rect is 20. So in between that would be four, and between that would be two. So, and then we'll pass in arrow down and arrow right. So then we'll uh, use a toggle method. Oh, I editor dot editor dot there. So I'm going to use a toggle method in the GUI to uh, create a toggle that changes whenever we click on it from true and false. So then we need to draw the label. So gy dot label g dot name. We'll do it at inline plus fifteen, give or take. We'll see. We'll see how that looks. Offset y. Oh, been recording for a while. We need to get this over. All right. So what do we got next? Got drawing that. Now we need. So if it does. Okay. Else. GUI dot label G dot name inline offset Y. Daddy, look. I blowed this by myself. Mm, nice, buddy. It looks good. Can you close the door for me? Thank you. All right. So if there's no children at all, then we're just going to draw the label without this, uh, without this addition to it. And now what we need to do is we, we, yes, we already have the area. I keep on forgetting that we have that area. Uh, 
change the click rect again since we already have the area. So we'll say click rect dot set zero r dot y plus offset y and the width to do r dot width and for the height we will set it to 20 as well like right, click right dot set Yes, zero, because it stays on the very far left side. Now we need to, now that we've set our click rect, say if click rect dot contains mouse dot position and if mouse dot get button down zero I'm going to say selected equals g dot id and that will allow us to click on it say offset dot y plus equals 20 Wait, no, offset y, not offset dot y. Offset y plus equals 20, and then update, update list dot remove g. So we'll just remove it from the list. And I believe that's it. Now all we need to do is actually create the uh, GUI method to render toggles. Let's go into here. Go over by button or something. Uh, let's see. And we'll do it above box. Why not? Alright, so this class should be fairly simple. Do public static boolean toggle boolean b um we also need an X position and a Y position. Oh crap. We also need GUI style on and GUI style off. And it's because since it's a toggle, you know, uh, some toggles like the boolean or whatever the boolean toggle for the uh, uh, component screen is going to be you know an x and then no x and then for this toggle it's going to be to the right and down arrows so we'll just leave it on and off because it's just representing whether the boolean is on or off or true or false Mm. All right, so we'll say GUI style S for style because we're either going to want on or off uh, depending on what it what it is. So we're going to say if B then S equals equals on else x equals off yeah yeah and that'll be pretty simple and 
and then F G Y button new rect X Y will automatically set it to a width of 15. The reason why I say X, Y, and no width or height, like say passing in a rectangle, is because toggles normally stay the exact same size. You don't increase the size or decrease the size. If you really wanted to, you can change or like remove this and just put rect and then put the rect information in here if, if you really want to. It's, it's completely up to you. But me personally, I keep it at the exact same size because you don't you don't use it except for interacting with uh, stupid little things like this like like this these little arrows you know they don't get bigger or smaller so after you pass in the rect say SS and close it off did I do that right no. What am I doing? Why am I closing it? Yes. Yes. Then I need to... So if I click that button, then I'm going to return not B. So it's going to return the opposite of what we passed in. If we clicked on it. Oh, the reason why that is because I didn't put a dot. Else, we're going to return B. So we're going to return the exact same thing we passed in if we didn't click on it. And that should be it finally. Okay, so everything's rendering properly, just like it should. Inside of the hierarchy, let's add some objects. We'll say game object A equals new game object A. Game object B equals new game object B and a game object C equals new game object C and this I'm just doing this just to just to test it out to make sure that it uh, sets properly whoa what just happened? Uh oh. We got something going on. Update this. Not remove. G. Uh, you know what? Give me just a second. I'll figure out where this is going just so I don't take any longer than we've already taken because we've taken quite a bit. All right, hold on just a second. All right, after a while of debugging, I realized that the error was right here. There needs to be a zero right here on this line. It needs to add zero children dot get I and then if we run this what it's gonna do is it's going to give us empty boxes because nothing is being drawn well it's being drawn but in the wrong position if I debug it I'm actually it's going backwards because this needs to be a plus and not a minus so in the parent function down here at the bottom and sit set inline 
it needs to be a plus not a minus so now if I run it it will add it to it and we can click and it will draw or it'll select the item and will draw wherever it is boxed in okay so now that that's done I will do some parenting to make sure that parenting works now. So let's call B dot parent A. No, not G dot P B dot. So we'll parent B to A. All right, there we go. So there's one that is not parented, so it's all the way to the left. And then this one is parented, so it has a an arrow since it has children. And if we do that, it will draw it right here. Now, one thing that we do have that we will need to change later is we don't have any. So if we click right here, going to automatically select it even though all we're doing is hitting this arrow we don't want that we want to be able to eat the eat the input uh, whenever we click on this so we don't want it to click on the the rectangle because we don't actually want to select it because we're just dropping it down which we will do that at a later date so, you see how that is uh, rendering. So then we'll just say, we'll parent this to B. And then that should give us three of them. One, two, three. And there we go. Now we have a fully functional hierarchy that we can actually uh, select so then whenever we draw this components window over here anytime we click on one it will show all the components that is for that game object and that basically ends this entire window so we've completely done the hierarchy now I mean later we'll add the ability to uh, drop in objects into the hierarchy and create objects and all that baloney but as uh, as for functionality wise uh, for the hierarchy window itself it is completely done so next week I will probably start doing the components window or or just the components themselves at least and we will go from there all right thanks for watching and if you're confused or anything just uh well it's right here in the video just check where i messed up make sure you follow it to the t and I guess I will see you next time.